Hello everyone, I uh, hope everybody is well wherever you are and uh, having a good week. So, I've got this rather large bowl blank. Um, I think it's, uh, is it Boobinger is it? Boobinger? Boobinger, how do you say it? I'm not too sure. That's what it is. Um, quite a nice piece, uh, quite expensive actually, very heavy. Um, and I had this idea in my head for a little while now, I haven't, just haven't got around to kind of doing it. Um, I haven't made a bowl for a while, so I thought I would make a bowl, but with a difference. Uh, again, I want it to be different because I want it to not just be an average bowl. But I want this to be fairly, well it's going to be fairly shallow anyway, but I want it to be fairly shallow, almost like a little platter as such, because I'm going to make some grooves in it and I'm going to try to fill it in some sort of way with these. Yep, loads of different cogs. Now, I don't know how it's going to work out, never do, but I kind of think that it will look quite interesting. So what we need to do is get this, so we got this, we got these. Wish me luck. So, as always, I'm going to need to uh, mark the centre up. Now, obviously we've got this tool, but for this it's quite a large piece, so um, this is how I do it. There may be a better way of doing it, I don't know. But uh, I'm just going to mark it up over here. Mark it either side. Let's say there's probably a longer one of these, I don't know. But this will this will do. This will do. Right, so all I'll do <coughs> is um I'll just mark these up. And we'll get somewhere where we need to be. I reckon it's there. Right. So put the plate on, get it sort of centred up where you think it's going to be. Roughly is fine. Now if you haven't got one of these plates, if you want to get into wood turning that is, then you need to get one. Okay, so the plate, you want to put the plate where you want to hollow out. So this is going to be hollowed out, so it's not going to be a problem with having the plate there because you're not going to see that. So the idea is put this on the lathe and then you finish the bottom first. Get that done so that you can flip it over, bang, and put it into the uh, chuck. So there we go, it's ready to be mounted. So um, the bowl is coming out okay so far. Um, I think it's still a little bit too thick. So I want to make it, when I mean thick, I mean it's too deep. 
um, because what I have planned for this is to fill this bowl with resin um, and I don't want to use too much resin up um, because what I've got in mind won't work although I don't know, we'll have to see um, so it's quite nice actually this wood, it's really really quite nice it's sort of finished, I think it's going to finish really well so I've got the back uh, ready to reverse it and put it into the chuck just need to finish the back off so um, just got to do, I'm going to put a first coat of sand and sealer on here now this is just a cellulose sand and sealer um, the actual packet has um, come off so but it is a uh, chestnut cellulose sanding sealer. So I'll put it, this on with the lathe stopped just so that I can get uh, everywhere with it and make sure that um, I've got it you know, in, in every groove possible. You can see that this is going to come up really nice, can't you? Just by putting this on. This is always the exciting bit, really, um, when making these wooden projects. Sort of like when you put on the first coat of a sand and sealer, and you can really get a, an indication of um, what it's going to look like. Look at that, that's fantastic. That's going to look really awesome. Imagine all that polished up, it's going to look pretty good. So, we're just going to finish the bob base. Um, it's going to need a little bit more sanding. Um, but look at that, that's awesome. What I might do as well with this, I'm not too sure, but I might use um, my spiralling tool. I'll show you that in a minute. I haven't done much work with the spiralling tool, so I'm still getting used to using it. But I'll show you that in a second. Just finish this. Wow, this is so awesome, This the way this looks. <laughs> I love it. Right, that's on there. So, spiraling tool, where are you? There. So this is the spiralling tool um, and what it's really designed for is to create patterns uh, and markings within your work. So I haven't really used it, I've seen a few people use it, so and I, uh, uh, well, I have used it a couple of times but I say not, uh, not a lot. So I was thinking about maybe making a few markings just in this ridge here. So. I'm going to sand this back again and then I'm going to try and use this if I can. We've got to be careful because if you if you kind of mess it up, you know, and then uh, you've got to you know, sand back quite a bit really, uh, if not take a bit more wood off really, if, uh, if it doesn't work out. So uh, that was 180 grit I used on that to sand that back. Um, <coughs> it doesn't need a, a big coarse sandpaper on this. Um, and it's finished quite well because I um, took some sort of nice, sort of fine shavings off earlier on. There we go. I don't know if you can see that with the spiraling tool. So um, I think you can. So I've gone sort of like made a little pattern on the inner circle and a little bit on the outer um, and it's actually crept over anyway onto the rim but actually I didn't mean to do that <laughs> but actually that looks all right um, see if we can show it up a little bit by putting a bit of uh, sand and sealer on it and you might be able to see it a little bit more but it's sort of like you know kind of creates a little bit of a um, a little bit of a funky pattern I suppose I'm going to sand it back a bit anyway, but when the, when it's finished, see, I think it will look quite nice. Um, let's sand it back. Um, we'll keep put a few more finishes on this if we can get this base finished. Um, I'm going to finish it with a couple more coats of sand in sealer. Um, I'm going to make sure that this 
piece here um, is concave a bit. Now the reason for that is so that when the bowl sits down it's going to sit quite nicely on the rim. Otherwise if you don't do that you'll find that the bowl will wobble um, unless you get an absolute perfect flat surface which in you know my case doesn't happen <laughs> so but no it, it's, it's definitely a good way of doing that finishing either bowls or pots is just just basically going in a little bit and just making sure that this is a bit more concave and this bit sticks out um, this will finish quite nicely so a couple of coats of sand and sealer Yorkshire grit and then finish it with some uh, Sheila wax friction polish Right, that looks nice. I'm pretty happy with that. See the pattern in there? Yeah, it's quite nice, isn't it? That spiral tool is, uh, I like that. So I've got the larger emblem in this one. Um, uh, so, so this is slightly bigger for bigger work. So that will fit nicely in there. As you can see, that will look really nice in the bottom of this piece of wood. This is a lovely, lovely bit of wood. So that's the base done. So now we've finished the base of the bowl, we can now flip it over uh, and then start hollowing out the inside. So, this is how it's looking so far. So, looking quite nice. I mean, no, that's because of the wood and the grain in it. It's just absolutely fabulous. So, you see what I'm doing here. I bet you don't know what I'm obviously up to at the moment, thinking, what the hell is he doing? Cutting holes in it like that. Mind you, it looks quite nice like that. <laughs> um, so, um, if all else fails, well, actually, no. I think if it fails, I think it's going to be a write off and this whole bowl is going to have to go in the bin. Um, I'm hoping that is not the case, um, but um, I've had to take out this groove I had here because the um, the cogs I've got are not small enough. Um, so the idea really is to lay these cogs all the way around. Now some of them fit in here and some of them will fit into here. Um, it just depends upon which ones I've got really and which mixture I go with. Um, I've finished this off already, put some finishes on it. I'm just going to apply some Wood Wax 22. This is fantastic stuff. Um, and uh, I've started using this again, really. So uh, I'm going to use the Wood Wax 22. This will shine up really nicely. Um, because once I've sealed this up with resin, I'm not going to have a chance to come back and polish this up because it's all going to be sealed. So I'm going to get this finished now, done. Um, and then we'll be the next stage we'll be polishing up the resin so uh, that's why I want to get this bit done now um, once I've done this finish I'll finish it with uh, some shell of wax and uh, that will be it so let's get that done now and then we'll move on hopefully 
to the next stage. Here's our Boo Binga bowl. Um, it's kind of what I was thinking, roughly anyway. So now what we've got to try and do is we're going to fill all of these gaps with all of these cogs that we've got over here. Now, I think what I'd probably go for is a mixed colour. Um, just to sort of like make it look a little bit, you know, a little bit different. And if you see what I'm doing here, I'm just going to add all these like this all over the place. Now I'm not going to just lay them in like this because if I put the resin in they're just going to float to the top and uh, that's going to be no good. So I need to choose one for the center. Maybe the silver one. Could go with the silver one. So I'm going to have to glue all of these down using, well, CA glue, I expect. I'm just going to put these little ones in here. Put the big ones in there. Um, which is probably going to take some time. I'm just going to get an idea, though, of how this is going to look. I won't fit in there, so it's just going to be all the little ones in here. This is going to take quite a while. I think what I'm going to have to do is set the pattern out first that I want um, and then glue it down afterwards like kind of section by section. Um, so the idea is get all that in, get it all glued in and then fill it with resin just above all the way along. Um, and that will be set quite nicely in the bottom then. So there we go. Let's hope it turns out alright. So there we go. All set out, ready to be glued down. So, <laughs> took a little while to get the sort of pattern that I was looking for, but um, yeah, I think that's pretty much there. Uh, now I've got to painstakingly super glue each one down carefully. <laughs> well, that was fun. One thing I haven't checked is whether or not it's going to fit in the pressure pot. That could be a problem. Right, is this going to fit? <laughs> Oh dear, I don't even know if I can get that in there, that's going to, um, how am I going to do that? Mm. It does fit in there, I'll tell you what I might have to do, oh god, I might have to pour the resin in the pot. Right, I think I'm ready for the pour, um, if I'm lucky enough as well, um, if this sets you know, the way I hope it will, I might not need to do much to it after I take it out of here. So, um, right, so I'm going to pour this in now. Wish me luck.
So, the moment of truth. Oh. That looks nice. Let's get it out. That actually looks pretty much done. There's a little bit um, over here that I might need to, just need to attend to, but that resin has set really, really nicely. I'm pretty pleased with that. I don't think I'm even going to rub it down. I think I'm just going to leave it as it is. I think it's almost finished like that, really. Just got to put the emblem on the bottom. And then I think we're done. Nice. There we go. It's done. Now I didn't have to do much, well I didn't actually do anything to this after I poured the resin in. Um, it set perfectly uh, in the pot and um, I've taken it out as you saw when I, when I opened it up and um, it's just, because it's set really nice, I didn't touch it, I didn't want to rub it down or anything like that. All I did was, I've just put it back on the lathe and I've just sort of polished this up a little bit and uh, put the uh, emblem in the bottom here. Um, now, oddly satisfyingly, these emblems I've got in here, these logos, you'll see them. These are a little bit different. They're a little bit larger. They've got a film on them. I thought I'd wait to take the film off on camera because it is quite one of those things that is, uh, if you like that sort of thing. <laughs> Ready? That was good, right? I don't know, it kind of felt good to, to me anyway. Um, so, so they've got little films on them, and you can peel those off. Now I get a lot of people ask me about these emblems, but really there's not really much help I can give you. I've put the link, the link is always at, on the description. It's always there. And it's just a company called Rudd. Um, they're not they, they are basically a company. I went to them and I said, right, this is my logo. I gave them the JPEG picture version, emailed that to them. This is my logo. I want little penny size um, discs, logo discs made. Um, and they came back and just gave me a quote and said, yeah, there you go. What about this? Gave me a proof of what it was going to look like. It's going to be in brass, it's going to be black uh, outlines. And that's it, they priced it up. I think it was about 500 pounds, UK pounds, 550 pounds, for about, uh, what was it? A couple of hundred, a few hundred, I think. I think they work out around about four, three to four pounds each. So they're not cheap, but I do really like them. But if you go to that company, if you're based in the UK, then just, just do the same as I did, just ring them up, email them. Um, if you're in the States or anywhere else in the world, then really the best bet is to either try and find a, a manufacturing company, not manufacturing, so engineering company uh, that might be able to make these up for you. Um, but you're gonna have to come up with your obviously your own logo design and everything first. Show them your logo and say, this is what my logo is. Can you make that into a little um, disc? I'll tell you who probably might be able to help as well. If you look at Etsy, so just go to the, uh, see if you can find a, a, an engineering firm um, and see if you can get them done there. But again, the link for the one in the UK that I use is always in the description, guys. So um, so there's the back of this piece. Really lovely wood, this bubinga. Really, really nice. I hope I'm saying it correct. And, and there's the finished bowl. So it's not, uh, yeah, not that big. It's not that deep. But I just thought it looked quite a nice piece. You could even probably hang it up on the wall if you wanted to. Um, you know, as a bit of a showpiece. I, I kind of like, I saw the, um, I had a lot of these cogs um, hanging around the shop. Um, you can see a good sort of like picture of it there. I need one of those kind of spinning things. You know, you see those, 
some people have got these like spinning things you put it on there and it just rotates around so you can see the work all of it or I could just stand here I could just do this probably not as good as a spinning thing um, anyway there it is Boobinga with cogs embedded into resin don't know what I'm going to call this one yet some kind of weird name to put up and um, I hope you enjoyed watching a little bit different again hopefully uh, maybe give you some ideas of using cogs um, it kind of turned out the, the, roughly how I was thinking I was thinking it was going to be somewhere something like this so it wasn't a million miles away from what I thought but yeah I'm pretty I'm pretty pleased with the results actually and obviously yeah we played around with the spiral tool as well didn't we on this one I like that I like that I'm going to use that a bit more so stills up at the end guys thanks very much for watching and joining me in the shop um, my workshop is coming on my new one my new one's coming that's going to be really really quite cool it's quite large going to have lots more machinery in there lots more space um, I've got a big NZ wood turning logo in the back which is going to look really quite cool so you, so it's going to have like big NZ wood turning and then I'm going to have everyone's stickers all around it so guys if you if you've got stickers to send me send me some stickers in the post so I can stick them up on the wall um, that'd be really quite cool and I'll give you a little shout out as well but um, I've got a few stickers and I've got some spare ones to stick up in the new shop so send me some stickers pop them in the post um, my PA box is, is in the description so you can send me anything there really um, so um, yeah hope you like it thanks for watching please subscribe if you haven't done already um, and give us a comment and hopefully a thumbs up If you've got anything or any ideas that you want me to try, just let me know. Either send me a comment below or you can send me a private message. I'm always up for new ideas and you know if you guys can help me uh, come up with some new ideas and funky things that I can add into my projects then let me know. Any ideas are always good so uh, chuck them over. I like the more funky weird ones. Hope you enjoyed the turning video and I will see you next time. And I hope you have a fabulous weekend. Take care.